Hello amazing creatives, I'm back again this week with some doodle inspiration as I make a piece for an amazing person and also I'm trying out some new to me watercolour paper along the way so let me show you my whole process for how I get to know and start using new products because I'm also testing out some new paints as well so I'm going to start with the paper so the one I'm using today is the Archer's watercolour paper and this one is a cold press so it's got a more textured surface and I got it in this block that has four sides glued except for a little section where there's no glue and this is where you take off the leaves and you do that by carefully inserting a clean flat knife something like a palette knife does really well and smoothly go around the edges to remove that top layer of paper and the very first time that you open this block up it's got a layer of protective black paper on it that you need to remove and it's actually a really nice piece of black cardstock so I'm going to be saving that for something else and when you get to the paper underneath that is the surface that you want to be working on and if you aren't used to using watercolour blocks like this then keep the paper on the block work on it and once you've finished your art and it's completely dry not just surface dry but completely dry then use the palette knife again to remove the artwork from the block and I'll show you how to do that and how to remove the black glue that gets left behind on the paper edges a bit later in the video and of course I've also got everything that I've used today linked up in the description below for you and whilst you're checking that out don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for your weekly mixed media art tips tricks and inspiration so the piece that I'm doing today is for a card and it's going to be a watercolour and ink doodle inspired by some of my recent doodles from my daily doodle diary <laughs> I have really got to get a better name for that it's just such a tongue twister but I'll give you a peek at that diary a bit later as well before I dive in though for this piece I did do some swatches to test out the colours I was thinking of using and the swatches that I'm doing I'm doing those on studio paper and this is also a new set of watercolours for me too so I haven't gotten around to sort of organising the palette yet or putting a little swatch card so I know which colours which I haven't done any of that yet I will do, I'll get around to it eventually these are the Schmincke Horden paints that I'm using today but also on the palette you might spot some of the keen eyed amongst you might spot some Mission Gold paints there too uh, they're just in holding there I haven't used them yet and I won't be using them today either but my first impressions of the Schmincke well they're really lovely lovely paint and highly pigmented yummy to work with so far so I'm really looking forward to doing more with them and because I haven't used these paints much and I've never used this paper before I do do a lot of swatches then also test out the design ideas as well that I've kind of got pictured in my mind before I even go anywhere near the new paper and this way I can get to grips with the paint test out the ideas see how they're going to work and also how I actually want to do it what techniques I want to use and these studies really help me to feel more confident about working on the new paper but they also highlighted to me that I needed to change up my brush as I wasn't getting enough control from the mop brush I was using so I swapped onto a smaller round brush for the actual piece and the brush that I swap onto is a sable brush and it still holds a lot of water but it's a lot smaller than the mop brush as it's a size 5 round brush and well just less moppy <laughs> so I feel a lot more in control which is what I need for this piece as I'm looking to put down some small geometric shapes using flat washes and gradient washes as well and, and that's going to be my background and I want those washes to be nice and smooth with no cauliflower blooms uh, usually I like the cauliflower blooms but for this I thought I'd go for smooth and th using this paper is great for that kind of look because of the way the water soaks into the fibres and it is a lot less likely to pool on the surface as it does with the studio and student quality watercolour papers that I use so when I start working on the paper and I'm not 100% sure how much water I need on my brush so I kind of work it out as I do it and get the hang of it and that's what you do, you kind of get the feel for it don't you? and what I'm looking for is some variations with the background shapes so I don't want them to be too blocky and I don't want the blocks to look the same as each other 
So from my earlier colour studies I decided to completely drop the blue because I was thinking about using blue and go instead with a couple of yellow colours. So I start off with a cadmium yellow light colour and I'm also going to be using a quinacridone gold hue too. And it fits perfectly for the recipient of this card because this card is for my mum and I wanted to send her something bright and warm and, and full of sunshine and happiness for Mother's Day because yeah, this is my Mother's Day card. And I also chose yellow because it reminds me of my mum's artwork. So my mum used to make these amazingly intricate ink doodles and I remember one in particular with daffodils. So the yellow just seemed fitting for the background of this piece as it's also going to be using ink doodles too, although in a different style to my mum's and I can't help but think when I do my abstract ink doodle pieces that they are actually influenced by the art my mum did as I was growing up. So that's really what's influencing this make and what's in my mind as I do it. So I have some recent pages from my daily doodle diary <laughs> And these are going to inspire the doodle that I am doing today for this piece. And I don't want to just copy one of them, I want to make some new artwork. So I will let the doodle kind of grow and flow and do its own thing and use layers as well to make it. And I'll start off with my favourite big brush pen and also add in some fine line markers as I go along too. And I love the heavy line of this brush pen and the dry brush texture that you can get with it. It really is a great pen and also you can use it with cartridges as well, ink cartridges, which is fantastic. And I think it looks especially textured on the cold press cotton paper surface. My diary paper is a lot smoother, I mean it's just ordinary paper. So it, it's kind of interesting to see the difference and feel how it works on this totally different type of surface. And the fine line markers work really well too. And once that black pen ink is dry, you can, you can work over the top with the fine line markers and there doesn't seem to be any movement of the black ink, which is good. I actually haven't yet tried this black ink with water or anything like that. I've literally just been using it as doodle fodder so I think I do need to try it out with some water at some stage. The other thing I really like about this piece is that the watercolour washes, that, that background watercolour washes, they subtly change the colour of the fine line marker because that's a dye ink. Don't think the camera can really pick it up as it is very subtle, but it makes a nice sort of variation on the piece. So once it's done, as I said, you really need to leave it for a good few hours, possibly even overnight, to really make sure that the paper is completely dry. And when you take it off, it should be nice and flat. But as always, I was in a rush to finish the filming for this before I lost the light. So I did take it off earlier than I would usually. I think you can probably see the remains of the black glue on the edge of the piece. I mean, there's no way of taking it off of this block without having those black pieces of glue still stuck to the paper edge. Well, not that I know of anyway. So what you have to do is excise them afterwards. And you can either do this with a craft knife and a ruler. I've even heard suggestions of people sort of like using nails to take them off, but I kind of think that would sort of change up the edge a bit. So I think, I think you'd be better off cutting them off in some way. And the way I'm going to do this is to use a paper trimmer. So as I said, yeah, you can use a craft knife and a ruler and, and cut them off on a cutting mat or go my route, which is just take off the tiniest slither of paper from the edges with a trimmer but do make sure that your trimmer is nice and clean you don't want to mess up your lovely piece of artwork because there's some ink or something on that plastic sleeve that keeps the paper in place as you cut now once it's all trimmed i can mount it on the front of my card blank with some gel medium and leave it under some heavy books for a while to just you know keep it flat and make sure the glue takes and you can really see that lovely cold press paper texture when we look close up and how intense and true the watercolour is. It's, it's really lovely on this artist quality paper. I'm definitely looking forward to exploring it some more and comparing it with the other artist quality papers I've got and well just all of the papers that I'm currently using. 
Let me know what your favourite paper for watercolour is at the moment. I would love to hear what you've been using. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be artist quality. As you know, I use a wide range of different things. I would love to hear what you use. Now, if you're looking for some more watercolour tips, tricks, inspiration for your mixed media projects, then watch these videos next and I'll see you there.